we're going to suspend the third to a fourth. Now it's typically used in a dominant. Not quite. Great video otherwise, but I'm going to explain why we call them suspensions. It's a classical counterpoint term. It's not about suspending the third up to the fourth. You've suspended the fourth from the chord before and carried it across the change of chord. The rules used to be that you had to. Every suspension consists of three parts. First part is called the preparation. The magician shows you a consonant chord tone. The second act is called the suspension. The magician takes the consonants and makes it into a dissonance by changing the chord underneath. But you wouldn't clap yet because making something dissonant isn't enough. You have to resolve it to a chord tone of the new harmony. See, a big part of classical music isn't about thinking of chords as blocks over which you can put a melody. It's about writing interweaving melodies, writing horizontal lines of music that form vertical harmonies. Another important thing is the contrast between consonance and dissonance. That's the quickest way I can explain this. Classical music is all about tension versus resolution. Tension coming from playing dissonance, resolution coming from playing consonants. Consonance is when you're playing notes of the chord or the good intervals, and dissonance is when you're playing notes that aren't part of the chord or the bad intervals. It's not about those intervals being bad, it's just about using them in a particular way because that was the style at the time. You couldn't just play a dissonance over a chord to an audience who had only recently stopped burning witches and still shat in buckets and threw it out the window. You had to prepare them for it, and one of those ways was with a suspension. You had to give it to them in three steps. Prepare it as a chord tone, then hold it across when the chord changes so it becomes a dissonance, then resolve it down to a chord tone. So when you've got the chord tones 1, 3, 5 or 8 of your standard four part harmony, you can resolve from the note above down to any one of them. The 4 to 3 suspension you recognise as a very churchy baroque sound. You've also got the 6 to the 5, the 9 to the 8. You can even suspend all the notes of a dominant seventh, making this very Mozart-y sound. But when we talk about sus chords today, we're always talking about the 4-3 suspension. If you suspend the fourth, you can't have the third. If you don't have the third, you don't know whether the chord's major or minor. This isn't about whether you're allowed to have those notes together, it's just about what you call them. If you do have the third and the fourth in the chord at the same time, then that's not a suspension, that's an add four. We've got a different word for that. So when we call them suspensions today, it's an antiquated term from a time when you actually had to suspend a dissonance from the chord before. And it's kind of like how we still use a picture of a floppy disk for a save symbol. And of course, keep in mind, flash forward a couple of hundred years through serialism and Stravinsky and Miles Davis, the concept of dissonance is meaningless. They're rules of a particular style, not how music should be. The people who wrote those rules lived in cities with streets completely covered in shit.